Uh, so uh, uh, let's start. I have to give a. Uh, I have to uh, uh, teach a kind of review session uh, tomorrow at noon. Uh, so that means that I will I will start 20 minutes late tomorrow because I will not finish by uh, uh, one. So we will start next time at, uh, at one twenty. Mm. So. Uh, uh, okay, so the plan uh, of this lecture is the following. I will state without a proof uh, a fundamental theorem, smooth best change theorem. Uh, and from this I will derive uh, the Riemann hypothesis for hypersurfaces. Uh, and then uh, next time we will start proving the smooth best change theorem. Okay. So, uh, so what is it about? Um, mm, okay. Mm. Uh, so, smooth base change. Here it is. So, roughly speaking, this is a statement about how homology with constant coefficients vary in family. So if you have a smooth, uh, proper morphism of algebraic varieties, we want to know how uh, homology of the fibers depend on the point on the base. For example, we can think of a uh, smooth, proper scheme over periodic integers. And we want to compare uh, homology of the special fiber, which is a variety of finite field, with homology of the generic fiber, which is a variety over QP. Uh, and uh, uh, the second homology group is, uh, well, we can say something about this using uh, base change to the field of complex numbers by embedding uh, QP and QP bar to the field of complex numbers and using the comparison. Mm, and so, so the smooth base change, which is, which is a bridge between uh, homology over finite field and over QP, is, is then very useful, as you're going to see in a second. So, so here is a uh, statement. So I will, um, my R will be um, mm, uh, strictly Hanselian uh, uh, ring. As I recall, this is an uh, analog of the formal disk in, uh, small disk in, in Tal topology. So an example of a strictly Hanselian uh, ring is, uh, 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 so complete uh, 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 local ring uh, with uh, uh, residue field. Uh, algebraically closed. So, um, okay, so I have, yeah, so I have K is the residue field, and it is algebraically closed. Uh, and uh, now we suppose we have the following situation. So I have uh, uh, X over uh, spectrum of R. And I have the special fiber, which is uh, over spec K. And let's give a name to this. Uh, right. And most importantly for this statement, I have the generic fiber, which I, I will look at the geometric generic fiber. So K is a fraction field. So you can think of a uh, spectrum of K as uh, analog of the punctured disk, formal punctured disk. And then this is the universal cover of the punctured disk, which is something like upper half plane. It's important that it's contractible. So, uh, and then you have this map, which is induced by the map from R to K bar, and I have the base change. This is the geometric generic fiber. Well, so I have this map, 
and it deduces something on homology. So the theorem asserts the following, that if, uh, if uh, this map, pi, uh, is smooth, Uh, and uh, mm, say um, n, I, I'm given an integer n, which is not divisible by the characteristic, characteristic of the base field, of the fraction field. Uh, and then I can look at the homology, et al homology, these finite coefficients. Uh, of x with coefficients in z mod and z with constant coefficients and I can consider the restriction map z mod and z and the claim is that this is an isomorphism. this is a remarkable statement so again, in topology, it would mean something like this, that if you have a smooth, uh, smooth uh, family over a disk, so you, uh, you can do two things. You can either look at the homology of this entire family, or you can uh, mm, do the best change to the universal cover of the punctured disk. So the universal cover of the punctured disk is something like this. It's upper half plane. And so over upper half plane, so you, well, you can decompose this into the map from the, from the upper half plane to the disk into cover over the punctured disk and the embedding of the punctured disk to the disk itself. So this, so this is my pullback. Right, so this is my x and this is my xk. So this xk, of course, dep a k bar depends only on the generic fiber of this family. So it depends only on the restriction of this over the, um, over the complement to this point. Uh, so, and then the claim is that, uh, so you have a map in this direction. That's just the pullback, right? This is my upper half plane. This is upper half plane, and this is the disk. So I have a map from the upper half plane to the disk, and I take the pullback. K, uh, uh, what, uh, in, uh, нет, значит, вот в этой картинке, как бы, D — это uh, типа uh, спектр рядов uh, от формальных рядов от, uh, ну, uh, от, uh, от одной переменной. Uh, K — это uh, ряды Лорана. K с чертой — это алгебраическое замыкание. Вот. So, uh, so, uh, so this, uh, then the statement is that, in fact, uh, in topology for, for smooth families of algebraic varieties over C, if this disk is sufficiently small, this, that's not only induces isomorphism on homology, that's a homotopy equivalence. Mm, and um, so, mm, that's the statement. Uh, and uh, so uh, let me explain some Corollaries of this. Um, mm, so uh, let's uh, imagine, uh, in addition, that uh, let's assume, in addition, that uh, in addition, that uh, uh, pi is proper. Then. Uh, so what is homology of a proper scheme over a Henselian ring? We had a general result about this. What does it say? So homology, imagine that you have a proper family over the disk. 
then one of the most important results that we proved the proper base change theorem assures that in this situation the the uh, the homology of this this whole entire family is the same as homology of the special fiber right so the special fiber uh, maps uh, so I have this restriction map and I also have uh, uh, this And I also have this, which is by proper base change is an isomorphism. Okay. So in particular, these two groups are isomorphic. So that's more precise than by just saying that they're, they're abstractly isomorphic. I constructed for you canonical isomorphism, right? Uh, so, uh, uh, Okay, um, so here is a, uh, 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 well, one, another, well, application of this. So again, assume that uh, pi is if, uh, uh, so if uh, pi, uh, so, so suppose I have uh, any uh, morphism from X to S, uh, which is uh, smooth, and proper. Uh, then, uh, uh, and assume that N is, uh, is invertible in S, meaning that N, that's an integer. And I can think of this integer as an element here. And I want it to be invertible. For example, S can be spectral of ZP and, uh, uh, and P does not divide them. Uh, then uh, the, all the higher direct images of the constant sheaf are local systems. Okay. So, uh, uh, let's see why this is the case. Uh, so, proof. Well, to save time, I will prove it in the case when dimension of the base is equal to one. And I will leave it for you to check that if I have a constructible shift, and I know that this is a constructible shift, then to test whether it's a local system, it suffices to do it by uh, after restriction to one dimensional substance. So you can reduce the general case to this one. And then what you do is the following. Um, mm, so, uh, 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 so, so you, so we have, uh, uh, a constructible shape on something one dimensional, think of this as kind of a curve, and you want to show that uh, it's, a, uh, it's in fact, uh, it's locally constant, and it suffices to do the following. Uh, so, uh, so suppose I have a point S in um, uh, S, uh, then uh, we have a local ring, And uh, uh, we also have uh, its strict Henselization. If you uh, don't remember, uh, well, it's good to remember what strict Henselization is, but in case you don't remember, think of this as uh, uh, kind of uh, analog of the formal disk around point S. Something, well, a very small et al neighborhood of point S in capital S. So, and it suffices to check, so let's call this strict Hensization R, 
and it suffices to check that uh, uh, mm, that uh, if I uh, let's uh, uh, call this maybe uh, uh, v. Что? Доказывается, что прямой образ постоянного пучка — это локальная система на S. То есть, собственно, в гладком отображении. И выводится это из этой вот теоремы о э, гладкой замене базы. Uh, so what you want to prove is that uh, so S is locally constant, but I know that it's constructible, so it suffices to check that uh, restriction of my constructible shift to this local ring is actually constant. That's what I will prove. So uh, V upper star uh, 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 R I pi low star of Z mod and Z is constant. Okay, so that's uh, uh, exactly like, well, if you, the risky topology, if you have a constructible shift to check that it's uh, uh, locally constant, you check that it's uh, locally constant when restricted to spectrum of local rings. So, uh, mm, okay, so uh, is constant, and then what we are going to do uh, so, uh, uh, so you can use proper base change theorem here. So you have uh, uh, spec R, uh, you have S, you have X, you have uh, the base change, XR. And by proper base change theorem, this is the same as uh, 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 this is the same as pi uh, r low star of uh, z mod and z, right? So we want to show that, so we are reduced to showing that in the case when r is strictly Gensilian, this uh, direct image is a constant shift. And, uh, okay, so what does it mean that the shift is constant? It means that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, so, um, so let me, uh, because, uh, so I will reduce to the case when spec R is equal to S, right? So we are now, from now on, we are looking at this. Uh, and I will call pi R. Just uh, so, uh, okay, uh, so what do we want to do? Uh, let's, uh, mm, mm, so we have uh, a map from, uh, mm, so let's take this sheaf uh, and uh, uh, so F is going to be uh, Ri pi low star of z mod and z. So what does it mean that a shift is constant? It means that if I take its global section, on uh, S, then, uh, Да, это то же самое, что по идее так. Ну, ну ты хочешь, ну, ну, я как бы полбэк uh, ZPNZ, он везде ZPNZ. Yeah. ZPNZ. Это постоянный бычок. Вообще должен yeah. быть. Вот. Окей, uh, uh, okay. so what does it mean that a shift is constant? It means that uh, the canonical morphism from the constant shift associate to this group, to uh, F, right? For any F, I have such a map. 
This map is an nice map. Uh, okay, so mm, mm. but uh, so R is uh, is uh, dimension one strictly Gensilian. Well, R has only two points: the special point, which is K, and the generic point, which is which is capital K. So uh, so I want to show that this canon this this map which are, we which we are given. Is, uh, is an isomorphism, yeah? that's what we want. So, and to do this, it suffices to check that, uh, so, so by, um, by, the, by uh, proper base change, this, well, first of all, that's the same as, uh, because S is strictly Gensilian, this is the same as uh, simply the fiber homology of a, uh, of any sheaf on a strictly Gensilian ring is just the fiber of my sheaf at the gem at the special point. So this is uh, K, right? So 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 this map, if I look at the this is a sheaf associated to this abelian group. That's a constant sheaf. So I want to show that this canonical map is an isomorphism. So it suffices to check that it's an isomorphism on stocks at two points, at the special point, which is K, at, at the geometric generic point, which is capital K bar. So the special point, it's, it's true by definition. And the generic point, uh, so, uh, well, uh, uh, so, so, uh, uh, so it's enough to check. Let me write it here. So, so you have a morphism of sheaves on a scheme that has two points. And I am checking that this morphism of sheaves is an isomorphism on stocks. So, uh, uh, So enough uh, to check that uh, this is an isomorphism on uh, fibers at uh, spectrum K bar make into spec R, right? And so here you will get uh, what are the stocks? So this are this, which is the same as, uh, uh, well, this group is nothing else but homology. I homology, so F is this. So by the Lorentz spectral sequence and vanishing of the higher homology on the ring, this is just the global sections of, oh, well, sorry, homology of X with coefficients in Z mod and Z. So this map, uh, so, so the identification between this group and this group can be interpreted as this isomorphism. And uh, so here we take the uh, F restricted to K, the fibers. So uh, which is again uh, by uh, nothing else but homology of X K bar these coefficients in zero and C. So. Uh, so I'm saying that the stock of this guy at point K, at this point, well, the stocks are equal, at, this is a constant shift, so at the end the stocks are equal uh, at all points. Uh, so this is this guy, and the stock of F is, uh, is equal to homology of the gene geometric generic fiber of X. So, and the map, this map, 
is nothing else but this specialization map that we have here. So by theorem, by proper, by, by uh, smooth base change, base change, this is an isomorphism. Okay, very good. So let's see more concrete applications of this. Uh, so, yeah. Yes, it is. And it is also, uh, 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 so let's, let's maybe see one, uh, uh, one reason why, uh, well, so it, it is okay if uh, this sheaf, you can replace this sheaf by any local system on X. That's okay. But definitely you cannot replace it by an arbitrary, say, constructible shift. Because this is, at the end, you see that this assertion relates homology of the special fiber and homology of the generic fiber. And if you shift, if you shift like, uh, say, extension by zero of something from the generic fiber, there is no way to compare the two groups, right? So for, for uh, for, for, for local systems, uh, it's true, and the proof that I will discuss later will prove also this for local. That's, that's kind of a local statement, so uh, replacing, uh, you can replace X by uh, cancelization at any point, and then it's, uh, uh, I may assume that the shift is constant. All right, good question. So another important uh, assumption here is that N is relatively prime to the characteristic, so why is that important? Can you give an example where it fails? So, so what, you, what I want you to remember from this, all this discussion is that, so if you have a, a, a smooth proper family over something like complete DVR, then the homology of the special fiber is the same as the homology of the generic fiber. Is it true if N is, uh, say, equal to the characteristic of the residue field. So, for example, what is first homology of an elliptic curve? Well, we did compute, with z mod and z coefficients, we did some computation. Right. So, uh, so, uh, uh, mm. It's due to n torsion points. Very good. Uh, so, uh, uh, so if uh, nth root of unity uh, already in k, then this is just n torsion points. Uh, so, uh, we computed homology with coefficients in mu n from the Kummer exact sequence, and we found that this is n torsion points in the Picard group. So, uh, in particular, just applying this to a family of elliptic curves, this is the assertion that uh, the, uh, the group of n torsion points in the special fiber is the same as the group of n torsion points in the generic fiber. And it is well known that if you have an elliptic curve in characteristic P, then it has at most P, P torsion points. Whereas in characteristic zero, it has always P squared torsion points. So, uh, okay. Uh, so that's, this theorem is a generalization of the fact that uh, uh, if you have a, say, elliptic curve over, uh, over R, then uh, the group scheme of its n torsion points when n is relatively prime to P is uh, finite et al over the base. Good. So uh, let's uh, see how, how powerful this is. So let's compute homology of projective space. Well, before I actually compute homology of projective space, uh, so let's, uh, let's discuss some general uh, construction. So uh, 
so for any, um, uh, so, so I, I will have some field K, uh, and uh, I'll assume that L, uh, that characteristic, that L is not divisible by characteristic of the base field. And I'm interested in L logic homology. So, uh, so I claim that for any X over K, I have uh, the, mm, mm, the uh, chart class map, which is uh, a map from Picard group of X to H2 of X with coefficients in QA of one. Right, so let's uh, let's see how it's constructed. So, so you have the fundamental uh, short exact sequence, the Kummer exact sequence. Uh, here I take L to the power n, uh, mu L to the power n, and uh, uh, this gives me. The one exact sequence on homology groups, and first homology group of this guy is by uh, with flat descent. It's the same as the Picard group. Pick, uh, 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 pick um, X, right? Uh, which is H one of X is coefficients strong, and this maps to uh, H2 of X with coefficients in mu L to the power N. So we get this map, and this group is defined as the inductive limit of this group stands there at this key. Sorry, not inductive, projective limit. So given a map here is even the ZL coefficients, uh, yes, factors. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, this is useful. We can construct some homology classes, and uh, uh, now. For example, for the projective space, mm. uh, so what we have, uh, uh, mm. uh, so uh, I, uh, uh, I can consider a uh, map uh, from mm, C1 in, uh, say, O1, uh, this is the uh, line bundle on Pn. Uh, this gives me an element in H2 of projective space. So I want to consider projective space over an algebraically closed field. Uh, QA of 1. Well, uh, because we are working over an algebraically closed field, it won't hurt if I put one here. So what does it really mean? So this space is equipped with the Galois action, uh, whatever it is, right? Because I have a Galois action here. And if I twist it by one, uh, so, so twist by one means that I change my Galois action by the cyclotomic character, and then, uh, uh, so we get, uh, we get an element here which is invariant under the Goliath because this construction is functorial with respect to all automorphisms. So uh, again, so first I get an invariant element here, but uh, uh, so, so if you work over K bar, this is a constant shift. So, so, so you can move it here. So that's invariant under the Goulash. Mm, and now, uh, 
Uh, so let's give a name to this class. Let's call it X. And then uh, the claim is that, um, mm, uh, so homology uh, uh, of, um, uh, uh, homology algebra of PN, K bar, uh, is, um, is QL coefficients. Well, uh, that's direct sum. It's, a, it's an algebra. Uh, and I say QL vector space, this is QL uh, plus uh, uh, QL of negative one plus uh, uh, QL of uh, negative one. So how uh, to see this? Well, uh, so this is an algebra. This is an element in this algebra. It's rather a map from QL, of QL twisted by negative one to this algebra, right? So here I have an element X invariant. So I can think of this as a map from QL of negative one to this algebra, homology algebra of P K bar Q L. So uh, now, uh, so this gives me, uh, well, a homomorphism from the polynomial algebra spanned by this X to this homology of the projective space. Ну, класс в когомологиях — это отображение из... Вот вообще вот класс в когомологиях вот здесь, да? Это отображение просто из QL сюда, да? Ну что такое задать элемент в векторном пространстве? Это то же самое, что задать гомоморфизм из э, такого векторного пространства в это векторное пространство. Правда? Ну просто образ единиц. Образ единицы — это x. Зачем я написал здесь минус единицу? Ну, я хочу как бы, э, меня интерес, я хочу вычислить вот эту группу не просто как абстрактно, как группу, как группу, как векторное пространство, даже как алгебра. Здесь стоим группа глав. Вот, э, вот у меня есть инвариантный вектор вот здесь, и про него можно думать как про отображение вот таких векторных пространств, которое эквивалентно относительно действия группы глав. Здесь оно как-то действует, и здесь тоже. So, uh, so this gives me a map from the polynomial algebra uh, spanned by this x to this homology, uh, uh, right? So this gives me a map from uh, direct sum of all uh, QL uh, negative, um, mm, negative i to this groups, to this algebra. Uh, and so my claim is that uh, uh, this map, first of all, it's zero in degrees uh, greater than dimension of projective space. And secondly, so it factors through finite direct sum. And secondly, is that this is an isomorphism, right? It induces this isomorphism. And how to see this? Well. Uh, 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 so uh, uh, let's, uh, let's just uh, do it as follows. So let's consider um, mm, mm, uh, pick uh, 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 pick uh, R uh, um, so uh, Okay, so, so here is the trick. So first of all, I know that this is the case when k is, has characteristic zero. Why is it the case? Because I have a map 
And if I want to show that it's an isomorphism, I can forget about the glow action. So K is algebraically closed field of characteristic zero. Embed this K bar into C. And then we know that a homology ring of projective space is spent by the first churn class. So, proof? А очень сложно а, посчитать когомологию афинного пространства. <laughs> Гораздо сложнее. Uh, so, K if uh, uh, characteristic of K uh, uh, is zero. Uh, now, uh, so let's assume that characteristic of K uh, is uh, P. Uh, may, uh, then we can, may replace, uh, assume that uh, K is actually FP. I can assume this because the projective space is defined over FP. If I can compute homology over FP bar, then by proper base change, it's true for any algebraically closed field. Right? Homology. Ну да, да. Вот. Окей, so we can, without lots of generality, I may assume that, uh, uh, because I, I can assume that my k is fp, and then uh, I can use uh, this theorem uh, the proper base change theorem, uh, this theorem, uh, if uh, in the case when R, I can take for my R for, st uh, for uh, strictly Hensilian ring to be just weight vectors of, uh, uh, of uh, FP bar. Or maybe just ZP, let's say ZP. Then uh, uh, I have projective space uh, over ZP. And this is a scheme, smooth proper scheme over, over, over spectrum of ZP. Потому что если у меня есть два алгебраических замках поля, K с чертой и какое-то большее, Вот у меня есть FP с чертой, и есть, э, оно содержится в каком-то большем поле. И если у меня есть многообразие здесь, то когомологии замены базы на K с чертой не такие же, как когомологии здесь. Это, например, следует из собственной замены базы. Там даже было такое, такое упражнение. Mm, вот. Окей. Mm, okay. So now I will consider this family, uh, and uh, so this is a smooth proper family, and I know that homology, the direct image of the constant shape, form a local system here. So uh, now, um, so how this local system looks like? First of all, uh, so I take R2 of pi low star of So that's a local system, but I claim that my Chern class construction gives me a map from the constant shift, QL, to uh, this is by one, to this local system. Right? So why that? Uh, because, uh, uh, well, uh, let me do it, explain this in two steps. So, uh, So 
So first of all, I claim that I have a map from QL uh, map minus one shifted by negative two. That's a complex supported in homological degree two to R P low star of QL. Indeed, in order to construct such a map, it suffices to construct a map from by junction from QL. So this is on uh, spec R in the category of sheaves on spec, uh, spec R. Uh, and by junction, that is the same as given a map here. on uh, projective space. Oh. What, what does it mean to give a map from a constant shift shifted to a, another constant shift? It's the same as giving a class C1 of 1 in uh, second homology group of projective space with QL coefficients shifted by one. So this class can be interpreted as a map in the derived category from QL to QL twisted by one and shifted by two, which is the same as this map. So this class gives me this. It also gives me this, and uh, uh, so looking at degree two homology shifts, you get this arrow, right? So uh, so now. Uh, from this, using the fact that this is an algebra in the category of sheets, because it's a pullback of an al push forward of an algebra, you get a map from QA uh, plus uh, uh, QA of uh, negative one plus uh, QA of negative n to uh, uh, direct sum of R. By low star of QA. And so using that, uh, again, this is an algebra, we construct such a map. And now I claim that this map, that's a map of shifts on spectrum of ZP. And I claim that this map is an isomorphism. Why it's an isomorphism? Because this is a local system. And this is also a local system. So to check that a morphism of local systems is an isomorphism, it suffices to check that there is isomorphism at one point. But I want to take for this point the generic point, which is of characteristic zero. OK. Uh, this is an isomorphism because over uh, Q uh, P bar, okay? So I could, it's not necessary to reduce to finite field. I could use vector, meet vectors, so I decided that I would kind of simplify, uh, well, I wanted to avoid using bit vectors. Okay, so uh, that's very good. So, and in particular, we proved the veil hypothesis, at least for one higher dimensional uh, variety, for projective space. We know that the eigenvalue of the Frobenius, well, the eigenvalue of the geometric Frobenius here is P. Well, if you, if you consider P Frobenius, if you look at over FP, if, if you consider it's, it's a projective space over FQ, it would be multiplication by Q. So the eigenvalue on 
So you have only even-dimensional homology groups and you know eigenvalues of the Frobenius. You know how the Frobenius acts. Okay. This is, of course, not very uh, sort of computing that a function of projected space is not difficult. But, uh, okay, so um, now a more serious application uh, is uh, weak Lefschetz. Uh, Lefschetz. Well, what I will prove is a special case of the weak Lefschetz that I will need right away. So, uh, so suppose we have a smooth hypersurface. So corollary, that's also corollary of smooth space change. So uh, weak Lefschetz tells you something about uh, mm, homology of projective space. See over an algebraically closed field. Uh, okay, so this will be, uh, let's say, d plus one. So it's of dimension d in d plus one dimensional space. Mm. So uh, the statement is that uh, the, the restriction map from homology of um, projective space. Uh, z plus one over k bar uh, to uh, homology uh, of x is an isomorphism. That's the restriction map. It's an isomorphism in degrees less than dimension of x. Okay, mm, so and of course we, we already know what homology of the projective space is. So, well, they prove that I will, instead, well, I, will, I will not prove it from sc scratch. Instead, I will use proper base change theorem to reduce it to the case of complex numbers where the statement is known. So, uh, 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 okay, so uh, uh, use, I'll just write that use that uh, mm, uh, X is liftable over uh, with vectors, well, here I have to use it, uh, over uh, uh, liftable and uh, uh, the result, the result over C. Well, so what you do, you pre do precisely the same thing. So how you lift it, first of all. So X is given by one equation, right? So this is given by some equation, uh, F equal to zero, right? So just lift coefficients arbitrary. Algebraic variety is sometimes difficult to lift, and not, they're not all liftable over V vectors. But if a variety is a complete intersection, right, then you just lift coefficients arbitrary. So the, difficulty could, the difficult thing could be if you have, for example, a curve in uh, P3, which is given by three equations other than two. Then uh, if you lift the coefficients arbitrary, you have three equations, and uh, it could define something empty over QP, right? Generic three equations, generically, well, three hypersurfaces in P3 do not intersect each other. So this means that your family will not be flat. It will have something over the special fiber, but nothing over in characteristic zero. In particular, it will not be smooth. So and if in this situation, you can, you can do this. 
And uh, so the, uh, how you reduce, use the proper base change theorem. You, you look at, so you have liftings, mm, spectrum of weight vectors, and um, mm, so, uh, so you have uh, uh, this uh, projective space, which is over the same base. Uh, this is uh, d plus 1. So you have, uh, this is pi, and this is uh, pi prime. And then you have the restriction map, which is from pi prime r i, o star of the constant shift, to uh, uh, R i pi uh, o star of Q l, right? That's given by the restriction map. And uh, so from smooth base change, we know that all these are local systems. So in order to show that it's an isomorphism, suffices to show that it's over a generic point, which is now over, has characteristics. So this is an isomorphism. Okay? So, uh, 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 so let's uh, let's do something else. Let's uh, let's prove Poincaré duality for hypersurfaces the same way. Uh, so um, mm, so uh, I will. Uh, I claim that uh, so corollary uh, so again so x is a hypersurface uh, the d plus one as before smooth hypersurface uh, then uh, so I'm interested in homology group. Uh, of x uh, k bar with squared coefficients. What are these groups? What can you say from about these groups from the weak Lefschetz theorem? They are QL0, QL0 QL? Yeah, so uh, let's say like this. So I'm interested in twists, right? I'm interested in the Galois action. So the Galois, uh, so this, this is a vector space with a Galois action, and we computed it. So it's i over 2, negative i over 2, when i is even, and uh, not equal to z where D is the dimension. It's the middle homology group. Uh, and zero, if I is odd, and also not equal to D, right? Yes, so that's, that's what I want to explain. So for I less than D, we know the assertion. I want to prove it for I greater than Z. So, but before I do a proof, so let's, let's see what it means. It means that homology of a, any hypersurface are very simple. They are interested only in one degree. In all other degrees, they're at most one dimension. So, uh, uh, okay. Uh, So, uh, proof. Well, 
So, uh, so first of all, I claim that H2D uh, X uh, K bar QL uh, is uh, QL uh, negative D. That's a special case of that. So how to see this? Well, uh, so again, so you have this, uh, you have this uh, 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 lifting of x over the weight vectors uh, spectrum of the weight vectors of k bar, and um, mm, well, so. Uh, from just by looking at the lifting and applying the base change theorem and the Poincaré duality, the fact that the top homology of a smooth proper variety over a field of complex numbers is one dimensional, we know that this group is one dimensional. The actually, the content is uh, the Galois action here, right? So how to see the Galois action? I want to show that this is a one-dimensional space with the Galois action that I have here. So let's just take a, a generic, well, uh, any, for any uh, uh, hypersurface, if I choose a sufficiently generic point, I can construct a projection uh, from X to uh, the projective space of dimension D over the weight vectors. Uh, I can do it over, over any field, over any base. Да, да, мы хотим доказать, что, uh, что это одномерное пространство, но это я уже объяснил, почему, я, почему это одномерное пространство. Просто поднимаете гиперповерхность над Виктора Витта, вы знаете, что это локальная система, и знаете, что ее общий слой, это он одномерен, значит, это специальный слой одномерен. Но теперь я хочу только доказать, что, uh, uh, поскольку как мы вычисляем, что это локальная система, мы используем сравнение с комплексными когомологиями. И это не совсем честно, потому что, э, э, потому что э, 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 значит, э, ну, э, там мы теряем э, действие группы ГУЛА, когда мы сравниваем с комплексными коэффициентами, э, с, с, ну, когда мы используем теорему сравнения. Теперь я хочу восстановить действие группы ГУЛА. Я выбираю конечный морфизм, finite морфизм, морфизм. And then, uh, so uh, this induces uh, an isomorphism. Well, that's, this finite morphism induces again a morphism uh, between local systems, this local system and this local system, the direct images. Uh, so this, this is pi and this is pi prime. And this gives me a map from pi prime. Um, mm, uh, uh, pi prime uh, are 2D. QL uh, 2 are uh, 2D pi star QL. So, right? And so I already know that this local system is QL uh, shifted by uh, negative D. That's a constant local system. Yeah. And this is a morphism of local systems. I claim that this is an isomorphism. That's an isomorphism because it's isomorphism over generic point. Right? So if I have, I use the following fact that if I have a finite map between smooth projective varieties over the field of complex numbers, then it induces an isomorphism on the top homology. Namely, this map on the top homology is going to be the multiplication by the degree of this map. Uh, okay, so, uh, so this proves this assertion. And uh, now using 
same argument, you can prove Poincaré duality. Uh, yeah, integrally you need to work a little bit hard and you also need to work a little bit hard. That's, uh, 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 it's, it's, the statement is true integrally, uh, but you need to work a little bit hard, so I, and also you need to work a little bit hard to show that this isomorphism is canonical. So, so far we constructed this, but it depends on the choice of this projection, right? So, but uh, for the application, I have in mind we need only only this. So now we have uh, the cup pairing. So we have uh, I, uh, homology of the projective space. Uh, this is uh, sorry. This is uh, it's X uh, Q L. Uh, Tensor it with homology of degree 2D minus I of X K bar QL. And this goes to, by the product, it goes to H2 uh, D of X uh, K bar with coefficients in QL. And we just computed this. That's QL uh, minus 2D. And so the claim is that this is a perfect pairing. pairing. Right? So in particular, uh, we conclude, we complete the proof of this. So we, from the weak left shots, we know half of the assertion, right, for i less than d. And for i greater than d, we know it from the Poincaré duality. And why is it a perfect pairing? Because it's a perfect pairing because again, so the map is defined in family. It's defined for x for this script x. And it's an isomorphism, it's, it's a morphism. It becomes a morphism of local systems. So to show that it's, uh, it's a perfect pairing, it suffices to show that it's over a generic point. At over a generic point, it becomes the usual point credit on it. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, why? No, why? No, so, 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 so it gives me a map from the local system, from, uh, from the direct image to the dual local system. And I want to show that this map is an isomorphism. So it gives me uh, a map from R pi uh, low star Okay, maybe I don't have to write it. So, so you have a local system on, on your base on the spectrum of the bit vectors corresponding to this group, and you have the dual to this. No, I don't use it. So this also gives a proof of the Poincaré duality for complete intersections. Okay, so uh, now I want to uh, uh, so, uh, explain, uh, well, at least start explaining the proof of the Riemann hypothesis for the hypersurface. So let me again recall the statement. So, uh, so theorem, which is uh, well, the main theorem. So uh, this is the last field conjecture is that if X over FP, FQ is smooth, projective, uh, then um, mm, um, uh, eigenvalues, then, uh, well, there are two assertions. So, uh, uh, so first of all, if you look at the characteristic polynomial determinant of uh, identity minus, well, it's convenient for me in this course right characteristic, consider not the characteristic polynomial, but I think it's called reciprocal. So, uh, uh, or this polynomial. Uh, uh, acting on X uh, FQ bar. Uh, 
has rational coefficients. And uh, so that's the first assertion, QL, right? So a priori, this coefficients, this uh, polynomial has integer coefficients. And the second, uh, so, sorry, elliptic coefficients, or ZL coefficients in ZL. And the second assertion, so eigenvalues. Frobenius uh, acting in RHI have uh, absolute value uh, equal to uh, Q to the power I over 2. And so by absolute value here, well, these are already from part A, I know that these are algebraic integers. Well, even if I didn't know part A, so, uh, 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 so these are elements in QL bar, right? And I consider all embeddings of this inter C. for all embeddings. So if I have an element here, I can say that, I will say that it has absolute value equal to this. If for all embeddings, the images have this absolute value. Okay? So, uh, and I will prove, I want to prove this for hypersurfaces. Uh, then maybe using the fact that any hypersurface, every variety is birational to a hypersurface by the primitive. Uh, element theorem. I'll prove it in general, uh, but we'll see if we we'll get to that. So, um, uh, uh, so, so proof for hypersurfaces. For uh, hypersurfaces. And the proof is based on the following remarkable lemma. So, um, let's see. So, key lama. So, everything that was before was some kind of, well, we set up the formalism of uh, etal homology, and then we try to uh, extend the results that we know about complex algebraic varieties to uh, Tal homology for varieties of an arbitrary field. So everything that goes inside into this proof does not have a complex analog. It's completely it's it's uh, it's new mathematics. So uh, so here is a kilema. Suppose I have an open subset in P1. Open. And suppose F is a uh, QL local system. So what is your QL local system? You can think of this very concretely. That's just a representation of the fundamental group of, um, mm, of your U uh, in uh, GL and QL. Right? A continuous with respect to the profile topology here and uh, and uh, logic topology here. Mm. So uh, assume that um, for every closet point of U, so if I have local system on U, I can restrict it to the spectrum of this uh, residue field, right? And get a local system over a finite field. What are local system over finite fields? That's just vector space, QL vector space with one operator called the Frobenius. 
So assume that uh, mm, uh, that uh, 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 eigenvalues of the Frobenius acting on the fiber of my local system over the geometric point of Rex uh, are real. Well, real means that for all this are a priori, again, some elements. So for all embeddings of QL, inter C, right? This is implicit here that they are algebraic numbers because otherwise I can always, if I have a non-algebraic number, transcendental number, I can always find an embedding that takes it to an arbitrary element in C, right? Uh, so uh, 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 assume also that uh, there exists one point, closed point, uh, such that the eigenvalues, this, the same eigenvalues, have absolute value equal to one. So then, the same is true for all of us. So that they're plus minus one. Why? Because they're real. Uh, uh, because they're real. Uh, sorry, yeah, uh, maybe, let's see. So, uh, yes, thank you, thank you for this. So, um, uh, yeah, so I, uh, thank you for this. I say something stupid. So. I don't want eigenvalues. Uh, I want coefficients of the characteristic. I want weaker assumptions. Sorry. So um, assume that uh, uh, coefficients, what point of the characteristic polynomial, which is the determinant of 1 minus t times the Frobenius, Uh, are real numbers. That's weaker than saying that the, the zeros are, of course, are real. So, and assume that, uh, that at one point the eigenvalues have absolute value of one. Then the same is true for all x. Okay? So, in the remaining uh, three or four minutes, let me uh, explain how this statement about representations of the fundamental group, which we will eventually prove using the Lefschetz, Grothendieck dick lefschetz trace formula that we have in our disposal, uh, 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 how this implies the theorem for hypersurfaces. So, well, what is, what is, uh, what is good about hypersurfaces is that So, so, uh, so suppose I have x in uh, p uh, d plus one uh, f q, then uh, so I claim that uh, claim is that um, mm, uh, well, so it's, it's given by, sorry, it's given by some equation. Uh, so uh, it's given by equation f equal to zero in Pn, right? So let's say that degree, uh, uh, so this is my x. Let's say the degree of this equation 
is equal to n. So the idea is to put this x into a family. So, uh, uh, so well, uh, so let's see. One, here is uh, uh, a step that I will definitely not explain now, but it's uh, kind of, it's elementary. One check that this, the assertion is true for one particular hypersurface. The theorem for uh, Fermat hypersurface. So x uh, n zero plus x zero n plus and so on, plus x uh, uh, one d n, right? So I will call this equation G. Okay. So maybe before I say this, so uh, so we want to show that. Uh, uh, that's that's. Let me. So recall that. Uh, so for any variety, we have a zeta function. Right. Uh, so it's zeta function. Well, it's uh, it's defined as a. Uh, uh, product over all closed points uh, of one minus over one minus uh, uh, t to the degree of this point, right? And on the other hand, by uh, Groth and Dick-Lefschetz formula, this equal to uh, uh, that's a rational function, uh, and it's equal to uh, uh, product where the factors, these polynomials, correspond to homology groups. So pi of t is uh, the determinant of 1 minus t times Frobenius uh, acting on h. Right? And so, uh, mm, Fortunately, for hypersurfaces, we know all homology groups. So we know that for all i other than d, this is a very simple polynomial. That's a one-dimensional space. That's 1 minus t times uh, q to the power i over 2. So only one polynomial appears this here, right? It's either a numerator or a denominator. So what, what it means is that if we know the number of points, if we can compute for some reason the number of points on this hypersurface, we know the zeta function and we know the action of the, all these polynomials, right? So when I say that one checks the theorem for this hypersurface, well, it was done by Gauss a long time ago. And he used Gauss sums to compute the number of points here explicitly. I will say something about this next time. But now, uh, mm, so, uh, so, so let's, let's kind of assume that we have, we know the result for G, and we want to prove it for F. So consider uh, the following uh, algebraic variety, X, and that will be sub-variety of P D plus one, times their fine line. And it will be given by equation uh, t times f plus 1 minus t times g equal to 0. So I think of this x as uh, a family over a1. And, uh, well, when t is zero, uh, you, get, uh, you get this hypersurface for which you know the result. And when t is one, you get what you want. So this could be singular. That need not be smooth, but it's definitely smooth. Well, it has two smooth fibers. And therefore, it's smooth over an open subset. This is smooth. 
smooth problem. So let's call this morphism pi. And then, uh, uh, So to complete the proof, you apply the key lemma. to uh, this uh, pi uh, rd of QA uh, shifted by um, d over 2. Yeah, maybe uh, I, uh, when I formulate the lemma, so uh, I said QL ecosystem. Let me, uh, there is one more correction. So let me consider, allow myself to consider this local systems. Or at least our finite extension. So, so you see, I want to twist by D over two. I have to either assume that square root of D is in QL, which I can also assume. Uh, or I have to add it to QL, right? So that's a one-dimensional vector space where the Frobenius acts by multiplying by Q to this power, D over 2. So it's square root of Q to the power of D. Okay? So, uh, so what, well, I claim that this local system F satisfies the assumption of the kilo. Why that? So, uh, first of all, let's look at this, this formula. So, we have zeta function, which is a power series with integer coefficients. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's expressed as a rational function, as a ratio of polynomials. And we know that all polynomials but one have rational coefficients. They are very simple polynomials because we know homology groups. So in this case, we know the first part of the theorem that all these coefficients, all these polynomials have actually rational coefficients, right? Because the formal Taylor series expansion for this rational, for this rational function has integer coefficients, right? So, uh, so all the characteristic polynomials has, have rational coefficients. In particular, they have real coefficients. Now here, I might need to extract square root of Q is D happens to be odd. So that's, but still the coefficients are going to be real, right? So uh, for all characteristic polynomials of the Frobenius acting on the stock. And again, at one point, namely corresponding to this Ferma hypersurface, we assume the result, and so by the key lemma, it would follow for other points. Okay, I'll stop. Uh, она не делится на два. Я говорю, что это, э, что такое, э, 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 как бы, э, э, ну, э, хорошо. Ну, что такое QL от э, э, одной второй? Это одномерное пространство, на котором Фробиниус действует умножением на э, U в степени э, минус одна вторая. Да. Зачем я это сделал? Я хочу, чтобы собственные значения, я знаю, что в одной точке собственные значения равны э, Q в степени э, D пополам, а я хочу, чтобы они теперь были равны по модулю единиц. Я откручиваю, теперь они будут равны единиц. Вот в этой леме здесь нужно, чтобы в одной точке был и один.
Вот. Но а, хорошо, значит, завтра мы будем изучать, а, повторять математический анализ, а, разные исходимости, признаки исходимости и а, формулу каши и все такое. Ну, ну, значит, если P, если как гомологии считать с коэффициентами взаимопростыми, ну, там, сейчас, сейчас, значит, как гомологии на C. Из какое вы берете пространство? P3? Я беру, что, я беру не собственное, я беру... Я понимаю, но вы берете P3 минус 7 скорейших минут. Ну, то есть они как бы вот совсем в общем положении. Но я хочу сказать, что если у вас... Там понятие общего положения, оно, в общем, давайте для определенности в P3 возьмем э, скрещивающие стримы. Хорошо, значит, над, э, э, ну, э, в общем, если характеристика не равняется, э, если коэффициенты вза, э, взаимно просты, z по nz и n взаимно просто с характеристикой, то тогда они такие же, как на c. Нам э, он в конце концов поможет. Просто нужно еще немножко потрудиться. Как вы вычисляете на С, как гомологии таких кривых? Ну, я разрезаю. Применяю майрус, я тоже все разрезаю. Ну, или вы применяете двойственность, то, что называется двойственность Александр. Вы можете выразить как гомологии дополнения через как гомологии того, чего вы выбрасываете, и как гомологии проективного пространства. Вот надо доказать двойственность Александра. Двойственность Александра это некоторое локальное утверждение про то, как, бы, как связаны к гомологии многообразия x минус y, где x может быть такое очень маленькое, и y. И доказательство двойственности Александра, ну это там, ну одно из методов доказательства сводится к как бы, методам деформации к нормальному конусу. Как бы доказывается это в ситуации, когда у вас x — это векторное пространство, рассвоение над каким-то многообразием, и вы выбрасываете его нулевое сечение. Вот в этом случае мы докажем такую вещь, что вот, вот если у вас есть рассвоение, из которого вы выбрасываете нулевое сечение, ну вот вы знаете, как считать на комплексными числами как гомологии, у вас есть там короткая точная последовательность. Ну то есть, хорошо, в общем случае это спектральная последовательность. Но там всего две строчки в этой спектральной последовательности. Вот такое же утверждение надо доказать на, для летальных гомологий над конечным полем. Но по сути дела это сводится к вычислению гомологии проективного, э, про афинного пространства. Вот это самый главный шаг. Как только мы это сможем сделать, мы э, победим. Но про это я тоже хотел еще рассказать. Это как бы часть двойственности Пункаре. Спасибо. До завтра.